This is my Sony HR Trinitron PVM 8045Q professional video monitor from 1999. You may remember I got two of these uh, from the TV station, made a video of them, and my plan was to keep one and sell the other with the money going to the TV station. Well, I haven't sold one yet, but I did trade one to someone in New York. Uh, what did I trade for that? A baby PVM! This is a Sony Trinitron model PVM 5041Q professional video monitor, 5 inch, 5 inch screen. This is the smallest color professional video monitor that Sony made. And this example was made in 2000. And uh, I got this as a trade for one of the 8-inch PVMs. And this thing works awesome. And it's in beautiful shape. And it's really, really cool. It's so tiny. It's a baby PVM. It's very long, though, you can see, as a matter of fact. It's the same length as the larger PVMs. But yeah, this thing has a 5-inch Trinitron CRT, and it is adorable. And it, and it works awesome. Really beautiful picture on this. I've always wanted one of the mini Trinitron TVs. Sony's made a few of them over the years. Um, not just this one for the professional market, but several uh, portable units too. In fact, they made one that has just a 4-inch screen, the model KV4000. But uh, those go for quite a lot of money. And these 5-inch PVMs go for a bit of money too, although not as much as larger PVMs. You may remember a few years back I had a Radio Shack Portavision 5-inch color TV, and I really loved that thing. I used it quite a bit. And then the CRT failed on it. The actual tube failed, and uh, the thing was junk. And ever since then, I've been sort of missing a tiny color CRT television or monitor. So getting this uh, is really awesome. Not only because it fills that void again, but this is so much better than that Radio Shack Portavision. Much, much, much higher quality picture on it. That Portavision, I, I think I roughly measured a horizontal resolution of about 200 lines. Well, this has a horizontal resolution of 333 lines. It's 250 television lines. Uh, television lines is a measurement of the horizontal resolution up to the uh, height of the CRT. So this thing has 250 lines, uh, television lines of horizontal resolution, but that equates to 333 lines across the entire width of the tube. So it's not as high resolution as the HR Trinitron PVMs, which have 450 television lines or 600 total lines of horizontal resolution. But 333 lines on this 5-inch tube, that's a really good picture and way better than that Portavision. So it's a really nice picture on this thing and super bright and saturated colors. The tube on this thing is in such good shape, it's so bright, way brighter than the 8-inch PVM actually. And you'll see that later when we turn it on. Unique to this model, a plastic shield is in front of the face of the tube. And that's because while the larger Trinitron tubes have this dark filter built into the glass that enhances the contrast, the 5 inch tube doesn't. If you were to remove this plastic shield, which you can do with an Allen key, it's just four Allen screws here, you'll find that the face of the tube is actually pretty white, like a cheap shadow mask uh, tube would be. So this is a tinted plastic that they put in front, uh, which darkens the picture a bit, which enhances the contrast. So that's why they've done that. You get the uh, bumper, the metal bumper bars on the front for protection when you're moving the thing around. And then similar controls to the larger PVM over here. Volume, contrast, chroma phase, that's uh, what on pedestrian uh, sets we would call the tint control. 
and this only applies to uh, the NTSC television system. PAL doesn't need a tint control because PAL is a superior system that doesn't have the design flaw requiring it. Your chroma level, that's your color saturation, and brightness control. Before I get to the buttons over here, let's take a look and see what's on the back. Not very heavy, this thing weighs less than 10 pounds. So here's our connections on the back. We have composite input and output, so you can loop it through, daisy chain, which is cool, self-terminating. We have audio in and out. This uh, set does have a built-in monitor speaker. And we have component. This little 5-inch set still allows for a component input. That's pretty darn cool. And like all PVMs, you can plug in either an RGB or YRB component signal. It accepts both your sync input for when you're using the RGB and your audio input as well. No S-Video on this, which is kind of disappointing. The larger PVMs have an S-Video input, but this one doesn't. Oh well. For such a small screen with a relatively low resolution, you probably wouldn't see too much difference between composite and S-Video. But I'm sure you will between composite and component really cool that this little set has a component input. You've got some controls back here, uh, your sync control, internal or external. This switch uh, switches between RGB or YRB inputs. YRB, they've labeled comp for component. And then a switch to go between 4x3 and 16x9 modes. Yes, this monitor from 2000 has a 16x9 mode. It'll accept a 16x9 signal and display it properly, just like the larger PVMs. Very nice. You have a remote jack, a standard 4-pin uh, 12-volt input. This is the common power input in the broadcast industry. Standard IEC AC input. That's very nice. A battery slot, so this thing will take a Sony model NP1 or NP1B uh, NICAD battery pack that slots in there. The 8-inch PVMs take two of those batteries. This one takes one, so very cool. There's the info plate, 120 volts, 50 or 60 hertz, 42 watts or 12 volts at 3.3 amps, made in Japan, of course. And if we flip it on its side so we can see the underbelly, we have another info plate. There's the data manufacturer, July of 2000. And we have a foot that we can prop up, which tilts it up a bit which is very nice, very nice feature. This is unique to the 5 inch model. So looking at the buttons over here, we have the switch to go between the composite input and the component input. We have horizontal vertical delay, which allows you to view the vertical and horizontal blanking intervals. This is really useful, especially when you're working with videotape. Underscan to let you see the uh, extreme boundaries of the video signal. That's a nice feature. And blue only. Uh, this puts the display into a monochrome mode where it only shows the blue component of the video signal. And this is useful if uh, you're using this as a viewfinder for a camera. Uh, it'll aid in focusing the camera because uh, a monochrome signal makes it easier to focus. If you ever wonder why uh, television studio cameras all have monochrome monitors, that's the reason why. The blue only mode is also useful for setting tracking on a videotape machine. Um, you can more easily see uh, how the signal looks and adjust your tracking that way. So useful feature. What are we missing? Well, we don't have a degauss button like we do on the larger PVMs. And we don't have the potentiometers to adjust the uh, bias and gain of the individual color components, although I'm sure there are internal potentiometers for that. You get a carrying handle, of course. So that's about it. It's a really sweet little 5-inch PVM 
really beautiful image on it so let's take a look at that now let me find a power cord to plug this thing in and something to pipe a signal into it all right i've got the unit plugged in here let's turn it on okay and i've actually got it plugged into the umatic vcr so i've got a tape in there that i'm midway through digitizing let's see how it looks Here you go. Hello and welcome once again to Opposition Forum. Today it is indeed a pleasure to have joining us here in the studio, Confederation of Regions MLA for the riding of Fredericton North, Mr. Ed Allen. Mr. Allen, thank you for joining. Thank you for seeing people fishing and that sort of thing so they get a real grasp for it. And you also have uh, order forms on the That was a picture of a website from 1993 or 4. That's pretty cool. I just randomly stumbled across that on this tape. But there you go. You can see. Really sweet picture. Do the HV delay here. You can see the blanking intervals there. So there you go. That's just a composite signal. I don't actually have... Well, I have one thing that can connect to this through a uh, component. But it's a DVD player which isn't much, and it's RCA style jack, so I'd have to round up some RGA, RC, RCA to BNC uh, connectors. But there you go. Here's some color bars. And as you can see, really, really bright and beautifully, just beautiful colors, really saturated. And really sharp picture, I see there's a speck of dirt behind the plastic shield that I'm going to have to go and have to remove, so pardon that. And the brightness and contrast isn't nearly up the whole way. I turn the contrast up, turn the brightness up. Holy cow, that's a bright screen. That's how bright this thing is. Wow. And that's good. That's really good for outdoor use because a popular use for these things was as outdoor field monitors. Another use for these things, uh, studio camera viewfinders. Sony actually sold a kit that would let you mount this on a studio camera as a viewfinder. That's pretty neat. But there you go. That's pretty much all there is to show of the Sony Trinitron PVM 5041Q 5-inch professional video monitor from 2000. What an adorable and really, really nice little monitor. Beautiful display on it, especially for how small the tube is. And really useful too. Three different power input methods, composite and component inputs. That's really, really nice. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.